This is our fourth discussion on thinking critically. In this video, we'll discuss using deductive reasoning. In our previous videos on thinking critically, we'll discuss some definitions of critical thinking. We'll look at the difference between fact and opinions, and we saw inductive reasoning in action. In this video, we're going to discuss using deductive reasoning. What is it, deductive reasoning? You start from a generalization and derive a specific fact from it. So you start from a general statement and you come down to a specific fact. Now the argument in uh, deductive reasoning or the statement using deductive reasoning are called syllogism. Syllogism, the argument used in deductive reasoning, syllogism. Now syllogism comprises three statements. The first is called the major premise, which is the most general statement. And then you come down to a more specific one, which is called the minor or particular premise. And from the minor, which is narrower than the major premise, you come to the conclusion, which is the narrowest, which you can specifically pinpoint as the conclusion drawn from the major and the minor or particular premise. These statements are called syllogism in deductive reasoning, syllogism. So we're going to look at some, example of, uh, some examples of syllogism. So example one, the major premise says, observing all COVID-19 protocols protect 100% from the virus. This is not a scientific fact, but we are taking this as just an example for this discussion. So let's assume that this is absolutely true just for the discussion. So major premise, observing all COVID-19 protocols protects 100% from the virus. Major premise, then minor premise. DAISY observes all COVID-19 protocols. And then we have uh, from the minor premise, the conclusion, which is DAISY is COVID-19 negative. Now, if the truth in the major premise is absolute and the truth in the minor premise is absolute, there is no way that the conclusion will be faulty. So this is one example of syllogism, the argument in deductive reasoning. Another example, major premise, all students reading entrepreneurship have a very high sense of responsibility. Let's assume this to be absolutely true. All students reading entrepreneurship have a very high sense of responsibility. Major premise, then we come to the minor premise. Shiranda is reading entrepreneurship. Shiranda is reading entrepreneurship. Then the conclusion would be, Shiranda has a very high sense of responsibility. If the truth in the major premise, if the truth in the minor premise, if these two truths marry each other, then definitely the conclusion will be absolutely true. Of course, we are just taking this for an example in this discussion. Now we need to avoid errors in deduction. As long as we are imperfect, we will make mistakes. We will commit errors. But we can avoid errors in any type of reasoning, like in deductive reasoning. How do we do that? An argument is valid only when the two conditions are met. Which two conditions? The conditions in the major premise and the minor or particular premise. If the two conditions are met, then no doubt the conclusion will be absolutely true. But if the conditions are not met, the conclusion will be faulty or wrong. Also, the argument must have valid logical forms. Well, the, the argument should appeal to our logic. It should make sense. It should be universally accepted. So the logic in our argument should make sense. So the two conditions must be met and that the argument should be logical. No doubt about that. Let's take one example. Major premise, some mammals lay eggs. Minor premise, the horse is a mammal. Conclusion, therefore the horse lays eggs. The conclusion is without a doubt faulty. All of us know horses, don't we? And they do not lay eggs. But suppose we do not know 
which animal is called a horse? What would have been the most appropriate conclusion? The most appropriate conclusion should have been, therefore, maybe the horse lays eggs. Because the major premise says some mammals, some is a very important word in that premise, not all. So maybe the horse lays eggs, but to say categorically that the horse lays eggs because uh, the major premise says some mammals lay egg, eggs, and that would be faulty. So even though the two conditions in the major premise and the minor premise in this example uh, are married to each other perfectly because the major says some, and of course, horse is part of the some. The conclusion is faulty because the conclusion is more categorical, while the major premise is very partial. So we need to make sure that the conditions are met and the forms are valid logically. Now, of course, we'll make errors in, in reasoning. So the name of uh, any error we make in reasoning is called um, fallacy. So an error in reasoning is called a fallacy. So you hear people say that is fallacious. It's an error in reasoning. Then we have examples of errors in reasoning as over generalization. As we saw in our previous videos, that is a very dangerous type of stereotyping. And then we have stereotyping itself being an error in reasoning, stereotyping people or things. Then we also have false premises. Once the premises do not meet or do not agree with each other, then the conclusion will be faulty. And of course, invalid forms or an invalid form could also be an error, contribute to an error in reasoning. So we have come to see that in deductive reasoning, we have the syllogism or the argument comprises three statements, the major premise, the minor particular premise, and the conclusion. For the conclusion to be absolutely true, the major and the minor premise should agree with each other. And we've also come to see that we have errors in reasoning called a fallacy. If there are more than one, of course, fallacies. And examples are overgeneralization, stereotyping, false premises, invalid form. I guess you have learned something about deductive reasoning, haven't you? On this note, wish you the very best and have a nice time.